Alright, in this video we're going to start talking off about properties of logarithms. Um, and again, to see some other examples about logarithms, feel free to visit my website. I have uh, lots of other examples there where the videos are a bit longer than what's allowed here on YouTube. Um, but again, just as a refresher of logarithms, there's quite a few things to talk about when dealing with logarithms, so um, probably not going to be able to do it all here in one video. Um, Definitely one rule that you want to remember is this very first one. It says basically if you have a logarithm to the base b, so the number b is what's called the base, so log base b of x equals y, really you can rewrite logarithms in terms of exponentials by using this corresponding formula on the right hand side. And anytime I see a logarithm, you know, logarithms somehow don't make sense to me. Even if I see a logarithm, I'm really thinking about its equivalent exponential form in my head. That's how I'm able to kind of make sense out of them. So this is definitely, I think, uh, the first and foremost thing you need to know about logarithms. Um, on the next line, there's just some notation stuff that's here worth uh, talking about. So if you have log base 10 of x, um, Instead of writing the 10 down here every time, we'll just write log of x. It's understood that there's a 10 down here. Just like we don't write 1x, we simply write x, and it's understood that it's a 1x. Same thing here. When we write just log of x, it's understood that it's log base 10 of x. Likewise, this, this number e, 2.71, Da 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 da. It keeps on going. Um, an irrational number, just like pi, is an irrational number. When you have log base e of x, we're actually going to rewrite that as ln of x, um, oftentimes called the natural logarithm. So the natural logarithm is the same thing as ln of x. Um, at first, this number e seems to be pretty weird. You know, the number pi, I guess in the same sense, should seem weird, except we know it's got a lot of applications to circles. Um, in the same way, e at first seems like kind of a, a completely random number, but it definitely crops up all over the place. For example, in finance, um, if you get continuous interest is kind of one example. But let's do a couple problems here, just um, using basically this first property up here about converting logarithms into exponential form. So, sorry I scratched it out at first. So suppose we want to evaluate log base 10 of 100. Log base 10 of 100 is some number, we'll call it x. Well, notice this pattern up here. It says basically if you take the base, raise it to the power, and then set it equal to the inside stuff, you get what's over here. So b raised to the y equals x. We can use that same little pattern here. It says 10 raised to the x is going to have to equal 100. And be careful, don't say x equals 10 because it's not multiplication, but x in this case is an exponent. So 10 squared is what equals 100, because 10 times 10 is 100. So that means that our x value is simply 2. So all that means is log base 10 of a one of 100 is just a fancy way for writing the number 2. The same way, suppose we have log base 2 of something equaling 3, and we want to know what, what value should go in there for x. Well, again, if you convert 2 to the third power is equivalent to our value on the inside x and 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2 which is 8 so it says what we should have then is log base 2 of 8 that's what equals 3 so in this case our solution would be x equals 8 if that if our instructions said simply solve for x um, maybe let's do one more here Suppose we had, um, let's make it log base 7 of 1 over 49. So again, log base 7 of 1 over 49 is some number. I don't know what it's equal to. That's what we're trying to figure out here. Again, let's simply call it x. So the same way, I'll, I'll rewrite this using exponents. So it says this is equivalent to writing 7 raised to the x power being equal to 1 over 49. 
All right, well, 7 squared is 49, but we don't want 49. We want 1 over 49. But the key here to recognize is that 49 is a power of 7. Okay, so when doing logarithms, you want to make sure, you may even want to brush up on your multiplication tables a little bit, um, because otherwise you may have a hard time recognizing some of this. So 49 is 7 squared. Okay, so I'm just rewriting the 1 over 49 as 1 over 7 squared. And then remember by property of exponents, I can bring the 7 to the numerator of the fraction, but then I have to change the sign on the exponent. But now I have what I need. It says 7 raised to the x has to equal 7 raised to the negative 2. Well, that must mean that the powers have to be equal. So we get simply that x equals negative 2 in this case. So just like before, log base 7 of 1 over 49, this is just some number. And it's just a fancy way, again, of writing the number, in this case, negative 2. Okay? So again, just some basic properties, um, being able to convert from logarithmic notation to exponential notation, I think is uh, definitely the first thing you'll want to know about logarithms. Um, let's see if we can't squeeze in a couple more of the properties here real quick and maybe do one example of this. Um, so suppose here we have, well there's uh, the next few rules I want to talk about are the following. Suppose we have a logarithm, we'll just write it log base b generically, and suppose we have a product on the inside, m times m times n. Um, and it doesn't have to be just single values, m and n could be very complicated quantities. There's a rule that says if you have products it turns into addition. You would think maybe your natural guess would be, well, products should turn into products, but, well, not quite this time. But I remember my little mnemonic device is that products become pluses, is the way I remember this one. The next one says if you have log base b of m divided by n, well, if multiplication becomes addition, maybe a good guess would be that division turns into subtraction and that is in fact what happens and last but not least so make sure you know these ones the last one that usually is introduced um, at the same time when doing these properties is an exponent rule so suppose you have log base b and we'll say you have x raised to the n power the quantity inside the parentheses has an exponent. The rule says you can bring that exponent out front as multiplication. Okay, so along with the exponential rule, you'll definitely want to know these. And let me do a quick example here before I step over my 10 minute time limit here. So suppose we want to expand the following. Suppose we have log base 3 of x squared times y plus 1 over z cubed. Well, the first thing I see is something on the top, something on the bottom. So I'm going to use this property, the middle property up here that I had, the division one. It says this will simply turn into log base 3 of the top stuff minus log base 3 of the bottom stuff. All right. And my next step now is to recognize I've got a product on my first term. So again, I can break this up as addition. So I'll have log base 3 of x squared plus log base 3 of y plus 1. And again, my minus log base 3 of z squared, excuse me, z cubed is just hanging out. Somebody's trying to call me. I don't know if you're getting that. Um, anyway, the last step to finish this out is to simply, we can now use this exponent rule. We can pull the exponents out front as coefficients. 2 times log base 3 of x, nothing to do on the middle one, log base 3 of y plus 1. Again, to pull the coefficient out, 3 times log base 3 of z. And now this original logarithm is, has been expanded into an equivalent logarithm. If you have questions, definitely feel free to look around YouTube. I'm going to try to post some follow-up videos, or you can also visit my website um, for some videos where they're all done at once.